the episode of the Renewalism Show, which is more special than any other because today we are talking about a subject that is even closer to my heart than energy, which we spoke of a little earlier. This is a subject of Qi Gang. I made a reference to it earlier, but today I'm so ripped to have a practitioner of Qi Gang. She's somebody who's uh, adopted this directly from Chinese masters over 15 years ago. And she's practicing this all over the Middle East and uh, Europe. Uh, please help me welcome Anya. But before we get Anya on, let me just uh, fill you in on the importance of Qigong and what, what it is uh, in the context of the Renewalism show. Now, as you would have gathered by now, this is the book Renewal. It's available online on Amazon. Head over to renewalism.com to pick up your copy from any of the Amazon links worldwide. But the book Renewal talks about the habit of uh, maintaining a Qigong practice to be stress-free and efficient. And it defines Qigong as a meditation in movement. Now I'm reading out from one of these blurbs here, okay? Qi is life force energy and gang is the word that means to work with. So when you're working with your life force energy, you are actually working very closely with what formed you, with the mind stream of consciousness that you were born with, which is why I said, I'm so excited about this. And uh, Anya is an expert, not only in helping you direct this uh, energy as you live and grow, but also in the how, you know, she's associated with a Japanese company that works with uh, portable water uh, treatment and how water is such a critical component. So uh, Anya has been uh, an actress, she's an artist, very warm hearted person. And of course it comes from her deep connection with energy. Please help me welcome Anya, a Ukrainian based in Dubai on the Renewalism show now. Hi Anya, can we see you around? Hey, great to have you Hello. there. <laughs> namaste, Namaste Sandeep. Thank namaste. you so much. Oh yes, I didn't mention you. to you viewers. Yeah. Anya has been in India several times. She's been trekking all over the Himalayas. And in fact, her nickname is Maharani. That is the name ordained to her in Badrinath. So <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> so namaste, good to have namaste. you. <clears throat> namaste Sandeep. Namaste everyone. So thank you for inviting me. I'm very honored. And it's always, uh, I'm so happy always to share this amazing ancient knowledge of so many centuries, which was available before only for kings. And uh, we have it today available. Just take it and uh, use it in your life and live a stress-free life and uh, uh, become a powerful being who we all are. So just uh, important to dig more inside. Uh, and discover that jewel which we are all hiding and uh, I think now is the most right time because uh, well uh, for a few months we were all sort of blocked inside right so it was a possibility the universe was just giving us that possibility come on guys please go inwards have a look inside you know stop wasting your time with the outside entertainment and all. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it's, it's actually, it's very great that the universe has created this possibility for us because the, when the outside is not available, uh, look inside and you might as well be surprised and uh, also fascinated what, what is the universe hiding inside of each one of us. <laughs> awesome, really. Amazing, you know, and uh, it, it's, it's so good that you start this conversation with the mention of inside because working with one's inner power and connecting one's inner power to the outer energy and abundance is a phenomenal uh, method of renewing oneself at a mind, body, spirit level. It's, it's really amazing. Now, I want to start with asking you, Anya, about your experience as uh, a Qigong and an energy master. How has that really made a difference? Because, you know, the purpose of the Renewalism show is to get people to relate with these habits. And uh, sometimes people think that a habit is something very complicated, but like you said, we've been forced into some new habits uh, because of the Corona crisis. And uh, we find that we have slipped into them some way or the other. But how do you slip into it by design? What was your journey in slipping into it? 
Mm. So I believe uh, that when you really uh, like something, you would devote your time and you would devote your uh, energy and emotions, right? When you want to, to discover. Uh, the style of Qigong, which I discovered in 2005, came into my life exactly at the right point when I needed to balance myself. So it, it was just planned by universe naturally. And uh, I remember at that moment I was devastated. Uh, uh, some major change in my life. I didn't get what I want. I was, I had to leave France. I couldn't live there. So I had to, you know, uh, with minimum of my baggage to leave it. And then I couldn't go back. So I was, uh, I was completely devastated. And uh, at that moment when I was in Ukraine, so there was somebody who told me about uh, Qigong practice and they said, okay, you have time, come and join. So I came, I joined, I liked it. And I completely, I became very, very uh, fascinated with this practice uh, because I started having uh, a lot of feeling of energy and different kind of phenom phenomenons and uh, through this practice I started feeling my past lives I started uh, so I, I got really really curious uh, about it and uh, I I was practicing every day for a few hours uh, even more sometimes and um, it, it, it helped me, me a lot it helped me to balance myself to uh, to really disconnect from my external uh, uh, grief, let's say, right? So um, it was the beginning of my spiritual awakening. So wow. it happened at the right time. And um, there is always something which is called divine timing. Things which are meant for you, they come to you at the right time. And there is no mistake in the universe. So um, so that's... Uh, and then... And then uh, uh, when you see it really helps you, then you just um, make it as your daily routine uh, because we can only uh, be successful when we have some healthy daily routine and we, and we maintain our energy, we maintain our balance. It's very easy to lose the balance. Because well, you, you can go and communicate, people are saying, oh my God, it's horrible, what's happening right now with the world? Everything is bad, everything is going to collapse, economy. So you can be like, oh, really? So you can lose the balance, right? If you don't have that kind of inner center, which Qigong gives you, uh, it's easy to lose the balance. And sometimes you meet all kinds of people, sometimes negative, sometimes positive, right? So it's uh, you can be affected by other people. So if you don't go always into your inner strength and knowing who you are, then uh, you will be lost completely. Yeah, the world is <laughs> so everything is happening very fast. Uh, everything is changing. Uh, you really need to have efforts to adjust to what is happening. What is important, no matter what's happening outside, every day look inside of yourself. Yeah, so have this daily healthy routine, what helps you to keep up your well being. So it can be Qigong, it can be just some breathing, it can be visualization, it can be some affirmations, uh, it can be going for a walk in the nature. I love swimming, I live by the sea, so it's part of my well-being. Uh, so very important to find something what helps you to uh, get back into the balance, yeah, and just keep it up and, uh, and life is built up on that, I believe. <laughs> Right, right. In fact, as I read out from the book, uh, the the concept of Qigong is defined as meditation and movement. And that movement, when it is, uh, uh, you make a habit out of, uh, you know, balancing that, then everything else in your life gets balanced the way you've experienced it. But how much time would you uh, spend on a Qigong routine uh, in a day? How much would you recommend to a beginner? So I would recommend at least half an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, half an hour and then one hour or it can be even more but even 15 minutes would do the job you know uh, so it's better to do 15 minutes other to, to say oh I don't have half an hour so I will not do it at all so right. that's what I would recommend so any time will do good but 
starting from 15 minutes, 30 minutes and onwards will give you good results. Right. You know, I have found that a sweet spot is around 20, 25 minutes because that's about the time that we take to brush our teeth and have a bath. And uh, just as uh, that's an external bath and an external cleaning of germs that we can see, or, you know, we see them in advertisements, <laughs> those animated germs. This is a, a cleaning of your inner energetic contaminations. And it's just like an in, inner bath. It's, a, it's an energy bath. Now, speaking of yep. baths and water, and in fact, I was very curious when you were talking about emotions and uh, you, you're kind of down on that. Um, and so many of us are all the time. And we, we recognize that we're down. But, uh, you know, the, the word emotion itself and the concept of emotions has to do with vibrations. And uh, again, in Renewal, uh, he makes a reference to how the vibrations affect our inside physically, which is our blood. And the way the blood moves is uh, because blood is water, essentially. So what is, what is it that you uh, have experienced and would like to you know, uh, also tell us from a scientific temperament, because there's this Japanese company that you're with, on uh, the impact of water on well-being and uh, uh, you know how how that fortifies our uh, our health water is very important our body is more than 70 percent made of water so if we are looking into our well-being we should be uh, 70 percent thinking what we drink and only 30 percent thinking what we eat yeah so the nurturing is of course important but water is very very important so according to uh, the chinese uh, science our body consists of uh, three main highways yeah the roads so the first one is uh, blood highways so the arterias and veins yeah then uh, we also have uh, energy vessels the meridians energy highways and as well as uh, water highways so water circulates together with the blood, uh, all, all together connected and energy helps to push. Um, so um, water is important element for us to hydrate our body, to mm -hmm. get our organs receive important hydration so that our kidneys can function properly, our digestive system uh, can eliminate the toxic waste properly and our brain needs uh, the good supply of water. So I got introduced about three years ago to um, this business and to uh, this interesting subject. And I found it, it was uh, quite amazing. And especially Japanese, they are so um, crazy about the water. <laughs> they do a no, lot. Actually, Dr. Emoto's experiments with the water and uh, the impact of emotions yeah, uh, on water. his water, they, they are incredible. I'm sure many of viewers have mm. seen it, but mm. if you would like to share, that's amazing work he did. Yeah, so it's possible to restructure the water so that the water works for our benefits. So you can talk to the water and you can say, I love you. And then the water will have that kind of energy and vibration. Yeah, so everything is vibration. Everything is energy. Everything is chi inside of us, outside of us, everything. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> True. So with our intention, with our focus, we are able to change that chi to what suits us, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, especially when we drink water, uh, um, you know, that's, that's how you, so I have my bottle always with me and I, and I drink it throughout the day and then I refill it and I drink it more. So, uh, with, with your thoughts, which you have in your mind, when you consume the water, this energy will reflect. So if you think about something bad or, so it will, it will go inside of you. If you talk about something bad while drinking the water, here we go, you will absorb it. But if you think positively and if you talk positively and uh, you always think about what is constructive, what is self-empowering, what is uh, enlightening or, you know, joyful. So when you really focus on that, then the energy will flow into that direction. So chi, gong, 
Qi is the energy, Gong is the mastering or directing the energy where you want it. Yeah, and we can be the masters of our energy when we just remember every time to focus and to direct it where, where we want. At some point, the energy also becomes accustomed and just obeys our command very, very easily. And that's the best part. <laughs> I guess the more you hydrate, the more easy it is for that flow to start happening internally. Yes, 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 also. So, um, yeah, this water is called uh, Kangen water. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 a, it's a Japanese concept which has been available in Japan since 1974, so many, many years, 45 years from now. And uh, they have created this technology based on the knowledge of uh, active hydrogen. So when the active hydrogen goes into active our hydrogen. yeah blood stream, how it affects the blood, how the blood becomes thinner and it starts circulating better and it goes and hydrates everyone and makes all the organs happy. So yeah. from there, the a lot of energy in the body uh, because the, the body is not fighting the blockages and uh, the body is not fighting the waste or toxins, the water takes care of that. Yeah, and then we feel more energized and we want to do more things in our life. And that's important. So I, I really like uh, this. Um, uh, I can talk forever about this subject <laughs> <laughs> if you would like me to. Yeah, no, but, but you know, the, 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 the viewer tip that I would uh, uh, draw from what you said is that you keep drinking water periodically. It's not like you have a lot of water and then you don't have any for three, four hours. Like you keep that bottle next to you all the time, I keep this glass next to me. Because you need to constantly keep hydrating and the more you do that, the, the more uh, smoothness you would have of energy flow. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. And you know, since you talked about active hydrogen, that's very interesting, something I uh, learned myself right now. I was more familiar with the oxygen, which is what we breathe. And uh, that's also because when we are practicing Qigong, we are very focused on the energy, the the air that we're taking in because that sort of converts to energy, oxygen converts to energy. And uh, we have also found uh, a lot of experiments which are actually standard operating procedures now in a lot of hospitals in China where they increase the rate of oxygenation. And uh, that, that helps even cure tumors of uh, cancerous nature. But uh, since you've been in India and since uh, you have been a practitioner, I think a lot of our viewers would have this uh, uh, nagging uh, conflict or uh, confusion between what is Qigong and what is yoga and is there uh, a map between the two or uh, are they very different and if they're different what is the difference? So I'm sure a lot of people ask you that question very often but I'd love our viewers to know. So what I say Qigong is a Chinese yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and they buy it, they take it, yeah. Because uh, many people know what's yoga, but not many people know what is Qigong. So I say, well, Qigong is a Chinese yoga. <laughs> no, but um, uh, if you speak seriously, uh, Qigong is an energy practice. So Qigong is the energy practice which allows you uh, to um, to your balance on physical, mental, emotional level, and uh, that's the practice which includes uh, uh, exercises in movement, uh, breathing exercises, and then meditation. So that's uh, what what I say. Uh, uh, yoga, I find it's um, it's it's a bit more. It depends on the style of yoga, of course. It can be very acrobatic. It can be uh, really, really stretching the body. So Qigong is much more soft. It's much more subtle, and right. it's, it's yeah, it's more um, uh, especially the style of Qigong which I uh, I'm teaching and I'm practicing. It's a uh, it's a spiritual practice. So there is a there is a lot of spiritual development on the higher levels uh, happening. Yeah. So, but basically, uh, Qigong is a Chinese yoga. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you actually gave us a clue which I'd like to expand on that we're talking about mind, body and energy with Qigong. 
Whereas uh, yoga, by definition, is joining. The word yoga means joining in Sanskrit, which is the joining of mind and body. So yes. we bring in the energetic aspects of uh, yoga in some high forms of yoga, which are like where we are, where we are dealing with Kundalini yoga, or uh, which are you know very intense uh, breathing exercises. In fact, I thought of this question because you are talking about breathing. And where you're talking about regulating the oxygen content. But like you rightly said, with, with Qigong, it just flows because you are invoking energy right from the start and making it a spiritual connection as well. So, yes. Uh, yes. But bef before the energy starts flowing, circulating freely, uh, there are certain um, exercises where you need to uh, remove the blockages. Yeah. And the blockages are created in our energy channels uh, through stress, through different kinds of negative emotions or, um, you know, the uh, uh, Wi-Fi radiation, etc., which all contributes mm -hmm. to the, those blockages. Yeah, yeah. So we first really open up those blockages and then the energy can circulate and then we can be really much more free in our body. Yes. True, true, true. Awesome, awesome. So I hope, uh, viewers, you got some uh, new ideas from here because like uh, Anya said, Qigong is uh, probably the best kept secret, but the most powerful one. It's really powerful if you apply it for just about uh, 15 to 30 minutes uh, a day. Get yourself professionally trained from somebody, look up Qigong practitioners. But uh, once you do, it just becomes stress reliever, a rebalancer, and all the good things that you talked about. So like that, every evening, guys, we are here at 9 p.m. with a subject matter expert, a guest on one of the habits of renewal. And this is one habit which I personally believe is intrinsic to renewal because it connects you spiritually, it connects you within, it connects inside and outside. And you can't start anything unless you start it from the inside. Like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. If we want to renew the world, we start with our own renewal. So join us every night, same link, subscribe to this page now, uh, subscribe to the video now, so that you get the notifications. And uh, we'll see you again at nine. But before I leave you, I'd like to just get back to Anya and uh, request her to share some last words of wisdom or whatever comes to your mind uh, viewers for today. So um, I would like everybody who is watching you, Sandeep, and uh, watching our um, uh, session today, to, uh, to take care of your body as a, a sacred temple, so that you are introducing to your body only the best, uh, and the healthiest food, the healthiest water, uh, the healthiest uh, mind, so being positive uh, and uh, uh, just trust that whatever is happening in the universe right now is a necessary process for the um, for the our planet to shift so please shift together with the planet uh, please work on yourself please work on your mindset uh, improve your mindset uh, don't allow any negativity to come and destroy your peace so just remove it, like uh, brush, brush it or vacuum clean your mind <laughs> if you want to, to imagine that you visualize uh, something like this and negative thoughts are going away. So treat your body, treat your mind as a really sacred temple which deserves only the best of the best. And uh, practice Qigong to help you to calm down, to to uh, create your inner peace, your inner balance, and um, as well, please drink lots of water, <laughs> which, which is good for your hydration, and your body will tell you a big thank you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for taking care of yourself, and for you start the whole global change in the world. So please take care of that, first of all. <laughs> Fantastic, Anya. Thank so. you so much for being part of the Renewalism Movement. And viewers, to you too, thanks for joining us on this episode. We're going to see you in your sacred temples every night. Have a great evening. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.